in Charlotte, North Carolina. It's the National 400 Stock Car Race. And this is a perfect fall day for this race today, although it's a little breezy. A great crowd has turned out to watch some of the fastest drivers in stock car racing in the world compete around this one and a half mile tri-oval track. This is Bill Fleming speaking from atop the grandstand where we'll be describing the action for you and working with us one of the all-time racing drivers, former Indianapolis winner Roger Ward. And Roger, it's great to see you up here. Well, thank you very much. I'm really excited and looking forward to this one. Have you driven this track before, Roger? Actually, only uh, around it in a passenger car. I've never raced on it. You know, if you uh, take a look at this starting field today, uh, led by Freddie Lorenzen's pole position, and you take a look at these speeds, you got to figure it's going to be pretty close all the way. It's going to be a really fantastic race. There certainly aren't any of the great stock car drivers missing. And uh, it'd be awful difficult to pick a winner at this time. Also working with us will be Chris Economaki in the pit area, National uh, Speed Sport News editor. And so, uh, Chris, let's get a comment from you right now about uh, some of the technical aspects and perhaps uh, some of the pit strategy in this race. Thanks, Bill. Well, I'm sitting in Fred Lorenzen's pit down here. And one can see how much equipment is needed to back up a top-ranking stock car driver. The pits are going to be an important place in this 400-mile race today. 267 laps around the track. There's 44 starters, and it's one of the few races where even the drivers say it's going to be a good one. There are many drivers who are evenly matched, and we look for a lot of exciting competition. The tires will be changed, and the bottles here contain nitrogen to operate the impact wrenches, and an assortment of tools necessary to work on the cars should trouble our eyes during the race. Now, back to you, Bill Fleming. Okay, Chris, and with all this fancy equipment down there, we've got a little red wagon that seems to be an indispensable item, Roger. Well, it certainly is. Actually, this is what the mechanic used to carry those parts that are just too heavy to lug around the pits. Well, in just a moment, we'll be getting underway, Roger. Uh, any prediction on uh, who's going to take that checkered flag first? Well, based on his performance on these super speedways, I would think that Freddie Lorenzen would be the favorite. But certainly you're going to have to keep your eye on men like Junior Johnson and A.J. Foyt. Particularly A.J. Foyt because he'll be starting a little ways back and you can look for him to really be charging to the front. All right, now let's set the field for the National 400. Well, here's the fellow who's going to be sitting next to Freddie Lorenzo. This is Cale Yarborough of Timmonsville, South Carolina. He'll be driving an orange Ford, number 27. Then we move back in the field. Here is Ned Jarrett. Car number 11, a familiar one to all racing fans. It's a blue 65 Ford. He's from Camden, South Carolina. And handsome Freddie Lorenzen of Elmhurst, Illinois, the pole sitter in his white Ford with a blue number 28 on the top. Here's Curtis Turner, hometown lad from Charlotte, North Carolina. He'll be in car 47. And in car number 26, the yellow Ford, Junior Johnson, the chicken farmer from Rhonda, North Carolina. And a real charger in the field, A.J. Foyt driving car number 41, a red Ford with a white top, and you can bet everybody will have their eyes on A.J. today. Now here's the course itself. It's one and a half miles around. It's sort of a tri-oval. The uh, north and south turns are banked 24 degrees, and the front and the back stretch are banked 5 degrees. 267 laps, and now they're coming out of the pits. And uh, let's check these cars as they move away. They all seem to be running. So the alternates will not be in the field. In the first row, number 28, Freddie Lorenzo. Next to him, number 27, Cale Yarborough. Behind them, number 16, Daryl Derringer and Mercury. Junior Johnson next to him. Then comes Earl Balmer in 15 and Kurt Turner in 47. Sam McQuagg was in 24 there and in 29 is Dick Hutcherson. J.T. Putney in 19, G.C. Spencer in 49, Buddy Baker in 86, and Junior Spencer in 17. Elmo Langley, 64, Marvin Panchin, 21, then Leroy Yarborough, Buck Baker, there he has, Bailey Cooper, Pace car is off, A.J. Foyt starting way back in eighth place, but keep your eye on him, and here we go! Freddie Lorenzen, the pole sitter, right out in front at the start of the race. 44 cars running, and what a racket! The average speed of these 44 cars, 140.805 miles an hour. So we've got a true field of class here today. Cale Yarborough on the inside, and here is A.J., who's already moved up about three cars. So Foyt is really moving. Yarborough's in the lead, and Lorenzen is second. Here's Curtis Turner on the inside in car number 44. 
47. A.J. on the outside of him as they flash by. And here's Treble up here in the number four turn. Car number 90 has spun. Car number 32, car 01, is hit by car number 53. So let's check them real quickly on what actually happened there. Frank Warren in 79 spun. Then Sonny Hutchins in 90 spun. Rock Harn is up against the wall. Harold Kite's car, number 01, was hit broadside by car number 53, it looks like, and that would be Jimmy Helms. So things really happen very quickly there. One driver is okay. This is Rock Harn getting out of his car, and they're trying to get the door open of Harold Kite's car. Frank Warren is out of his car. He's all right. Sonny Hutchins is out, but Kite is apparently still in. While that yellow caution flag is out there, Roger, let's just try to reconstruct that. It happened so fast. I saw Hutchins spin, and then uh, I saw Kite's car come down. That was the old one car, and he was hit broadside by, by Jimmy Helms, but it happened so quickly, I didn't really see it. Well, of course, these are the things that can happen sometimes in the early laps of a race. First of all, the drivers are a little tensed up. They're starting with a full load of fuel with brand new tires, and, of course, the tires stick a little better after they've got a couple laps on them. And, of course, uh, the fact that the drivers are attempting to get as many positions in those first two or three laps as they can uh, sometimes causes this kind of an accident. It's unfortunate, but it happens. Yeah. Well, let's go back now on the track and see uh, what has happened. This is Jimmy Helms' car, number 53. This was the car that struck Harold Kite. It looked like uh, Jimmy was trying to come to the inside to avoid the traffic above him. And this is Harold Kite's car, and boy, that is badly smashed. Now that went by so fast, let's look at that again in our videotape and take a look. There were the cars that spun. Harn goes up high, Warren goes down low along with Hutchins, and then Kite's car went to the inside and was hit by Jimmy Helms. So 53 hit 01, and the other two cars you see there are on the infield, Frank Warren and Sonny Hutchins, and Rock Harn is up here on the track. And so that is what caused the yellow flag to go out and here is the car that was struck this is Harold Kite's car hit broadside by Jimmy Helms both Helms and Kite have been taken to the hospital here at the Charlotte Motor Speedway we'll be back with more of the National 400 in Charlotte North Carolina in just a moment the drivers have just been told now one more lap under this caution flag, the flag that came out as a result of that five car pileup in the very first lap of this race. And here is the official Speedway report, and we'll read it to you. The Speedway Hospital reports that Harold Kite, 43 years old of Augusta, Georgia, was fatally injured in that accident. He was the father of two and an operator of an auto parts store in Augusta. He's been racing since 1939. He won the 160 mile Daytona Beach and Road Race in 1950. Hospital also reports that Jimmy Helms, also in that accident, suffered cuts and bruises but was not seriously injured. Rock Harn, Sonny Hutchins, and Frank Warren were not hurt. Roger? Well, Bill, I've been in racing all my life and still not able to think of a thing to say at a time like this. We have to hope that a study of this accident would produce better safety devices that would, might benefit other drivers in the future. Okay, Roger, and we're back to racing once again as the pace car is off. And here we go with Cale Yarborough, number 27, in the lead. Daryl Derringer in second place. Freddie Lorenzen's in third. And it is car number 26. That would be Junior Johnson in fourth place right now as we move into the green flag on the 17th lap. 16 run under the caution due to that first lap accident. And they're really moving now. As they go down the back stretch. the traffic thins out a little bit. Some of the faster cars moving up there, five, six, or seven of them leaving the slower cars behind, and here they come. Yarborough in first place, Derringer in second, Freddie Lorenzen in third, Junior Johnson in fourth, Curtis Turner, car number 47's in fifth, and he's being challenged now by A.J. Foyt in car number 41. A.J. has moved from eighth to sixth and is trying to put a drive on to get in there into fifth place as they move down the back stretch. It's still Cale, uh-oh, here's a spin in the upper right-hand turn. Car number 19, Putney's, goes to the outside rail. Two cars barely miss. Bobby John's in seven. He comes down to the inside, and Putney's car is still up against the guardrail. I don't know what, uh, whether a tire blew Roger or what, but they came together. Well, it looked to me as though J.D. Putney spun out, and, of course, Bobby John's was unable to avoid him uh, traveling at that speed, so they got together. And the yellow caution flag is out once again. 
This doesn't appear to be too serious an accident, although I don't think either car is going to be able to continue in the race. Uh, Putney's car is limping down to the inside, and uh, John's has already gone down the backstretch on the inside of the track, but there is some debris apparently up there. So these uh, cars have been slowed down to enable this uh, ground crew to get out there and remove any metal that happened to be there. Earlier, Chris Economaki talked to Sam McQuagg, a youthful driver, and he explained his philosophy of this race. What about the 400 miler here? How are you going to drive it? Well, I don't know. There's an awful lot of the cars running real close, and I'm going to try to stay out of trouble this time and probably drop back completely out of the front bunch to begin with and then take my chances on moving up later on real late in the race. Well, at some point in the race, you'll really put on a drive, huh? I imagine around the 300-mile mark, but I don't want to get up front because there's too many cars running too close together up there, and anything can happen there. Well, running up front right now, is Daryl Derringer right behind the pace car. The pace car pulls off. Now here's an interesting thing. Our attention was diverted to that spin. And as we left the lead car, it was Cale Yarborough. And apparently when that yellow light came on, Derringer moved right out ahead of Yarborough and took the lead. Now that is legal, isn't it, Roger? Yes, actually, the cars are allowed to race clear around to the starting line. And uh, uh, Daryl got a little jump on Cale and got into the lead. So it's Derringer in first place. And he is followed by Cale Yarborough, who's trying to challenge now for the lead. And we've got actually pretty good battles going for all positions. Uh, Lorenzen and Johnson and uh, are battling, and A.J. Foyt and Curtis Turner have a little thing going between them. Foyt still uh, right behind Turner, and there goes Yarborough up on the outside, Derringer on the inside. Can he get him? He might be able to, they're running awful close together. Actually, the car on the outside should have a slight advantage. Why is that? Well, because he has a better shot at the line would be a little bit straighter, and he'll make better use of his horsepower. Actually, up there, you can see him pull ahead just a little bit, and as they approach the front straightaway, he should be in the lead. And there he goes. And Freddie Lorenzo being challenged by Junior Johnson. And while we were talking, A.J. Foyt got by Curtis Turner and is now in fifth place. Right, and he's really moving. Uh, Foyt has started out uh, this race in eighth spot, which is kind of far down the pack, but he just barely qualified. As a matter of fact, they got that car out there about four minutes before the deadline. 28 now, Freddie Lorenzen is dropped back. Foyt is moving up. So here's the leader, Gail Yarborough. Derringer is in second place. And A.J. Foyt has moved up into the third place spot. Junior Johnson back now of AJ. So those cars, one, two, and three, Yarborough, Derringer, and Foyt, with Lorenzen slowing up. You know, one of the most colorful figures in racing today is AJ Foyt. And before this race got underway, Chris Economaki had an opportunity to talk with him about what he was going to do when it got underway. AJ, you're starting eighth in the race. Is going to make any difference in how you drive it? Well, no, uh, Chris. Uh, naturally, I'm going to try to get up front as soon as possible and try to hang on to the leaders. Do you think that the being back in eighth spot is going to be a little difficult? Well, if I can break through the traffic right at the first early stages, no. But if something would happen where I'd get hung up, the leaders possible could get away from me. When will you start your drive? Right in the first turn, or will you wait till things thin out? No, Chris. Uh, from the first turn on, I'll start trying to make my move. That was the interview recorded earlier with A.J. Foyt and talk about making his movies, making it right now on Daryl Derringer and making a run at Cale Yarborough. So there is Foyt in car number 41 on the inside. He's got Derringer on his right and he is taking a bead on the lead. Actually, this is the kind of a race that A.J. likes to drive. He likes to get right out there and lead every lap if he can and I wouldn't doubt before too long he's in the lead. Well, he's got second for sure right now. So he is in second, Derringer is in third, and uh, now Lorenzen seemed to slow up a little bit. Now, do you think he just uh, did that purposely, or do you think no, he has something wrong? No, I think uh, Lorenzen is planning his race properly. He doesn't like to lead the early laps. He'd rather take a little bit easy, uh, not abuse his automobile. He waits till long towards the middle or towards the end of the race to uh, try to make his run for the lead. Look at that, A.J. Go, he just essing in there, and I see a little smoke coming out of there, uh, Roger, out of car number 41. Uh, would that uh, 
Perhaps signal some trouble? No, I don't think so. Actually, what's happening, these boys are running flat out, and occasionally the back end gets just a little bit loose. And when that happens, occasionally uh, a little smoke will come off the tire, but there's no problem there. Well, it certainly doesn't appear to be, especially at the speeds they're running. We haven't officially clocked them yet, but they have to be up around that 148 mile an hour mark, and that is surprising, considering the amount of traffic on the uh, track right now. Well, actually, these cars could be running faster in the race than they qualified because with the benefit of a little draft, they could go a little bit faster. And there's A.J. just pulling up less than a car length behind Cale Yarborough, trying to grab this lead. Yarborough, ooh, A.J. just shaves by a slower car, but still can't get around Yarborough. Yarborough, Foyt, Derringer, Lorenzen, Johnson, Turner, Jarrett, Balmer, Panch, that's about the way they are right now as we see the field get strung out, but what a battle is going on here for first place. Yeah, this is a three-car uh, bid for the lead because Derringer's sitting right there behind Boyd trying to get by both of these fellas. And I'll tell you this, you try to put three cars abreast down that back stretch of the home stretch where it's uh, 45 feet wide or 60 feet in the turns, there isn't much room to move, and there goes Boyd, and here comes Derringer right behind him, and it looks like Boyd's got first place momentarily from Yarborough by half a car length anyway as they come to the head of the stretch it is A.J. Foyt in first place Yarborough in second look at that Derringer right behind Foyt pretty hard to say who's going to come out in the lead here Derringer had to back off a little bit they were lapping a slower automobile so A.J. Foyt uh, moving into the lead it took him uh, not too long to get there from the start of the race. Actually, he was in eighth place when he started. He takes the lead on the 41st lap of this race. 27 dropping back now. Yarborough may have trouble. Foyt still moving along, but Yarborough has dropped back. Derringer has a solid second place right now. Keep your eye on uh, 27, Roger. If you see anything, let me know. All right. Actually, you can still see Lorenzen. He's not too far behind these uh, uh, lead cars, so he's still in there. Yeah, here he is. Yarborough into the pits. This is a little too early for a planned pit stop, I would think. Yeah, I have an idea that maybe it might be some trouble. Chris Economaki's got uh, down there. Can, uh, Chris, no, no need to even talk because... Uh oh here's another car coming in the pits with trouble. Looks as though he's got a broken front suspension. Uh, yeah. <laughs> what cause is that, Roger? Did he hit anything? Well, probably not. Oh, 27 is going behind the wall, so he's definitely out of the race. Actually, this time of the year, the cars are a little older, and some of those parts that have been used all year might be a little bit weak. We're timing A.J. Foyt now. We'll see just how fast he's running. Okay, Roger. Uh, so that's a tough break for Yarbrough, who is running real hot behind uh, A.J., and he is out of the race. We'll try to get word on just exactly what put him out of the race right now. That was a 37-second lap. Okay, that converts to 145 miles an hour. Now down to the pits to Chris Economaki. Let's uh, hear what happened to Yarborough. Chris? Oh, Cale, you're out of the race early. For what reason? Uh, Chris, the uh, harmonic balancer came apart in the engine that balances the whole engine, and it just went uh, came apart, and my engine was so much out of balance, I couldn't run it anymore. You put on a great duel with Point there. Uh, were you concerned running so close? No, I wasn't, uh, Chris. My car was running so good and handling so perfect, and... I was just having a ball back there. Well, it's tough break for Cale Yarbrough. Out of the race early. Back to you, Bill Fleming. Okay, Chris, and a tough break for Cale Yarbrough. It was a great race, Cale, while you were in there. You know, a run down of the leaders, A.J. Foyt in first place, Daryl Derringer in second, Lorenzen is third. Uh, Junior Johnson is in the fourth spot, 47. That's Curtis Turner in fifth. Then Ned Jarrett, Earl Balmer, and Dick Hutcherson in that order. So A.J. Foyt made his move early. He's leading this race and has already put uh, Cale Yarborough out in a head-to-head -head battle and would like to go to work on some of these other hot competitors. So we'll be back in just a moment with more from the National 400 at the Charlotte Motor Speedway in Charlotte, North Carolina. A.J. Foyt has now upped his lead to roughly three seconds over the second place car, Daryl Derringer. We're in lap 57, so quickly let's run down the first 10 cars as they are right now. A.J. Foyt, Daryl Derringer, Fred Lorenzen, Junior Johnson, Curtis Turner, 
Ned Jarrett, Earl Balmer, Dick Hutcherson, Leroy Yarborough, and Sam McQuag in that order. So a good hot race, but we've got the first pit stops just about ready uh, to be coming up here. At least, uh, according to all theory, they were going to make about four stops, Roger Ward. That's right. Actually, very soon now, the lead car should be coming into the pits. And that's when it really gets to be a scramble. Here is Junior Johnson coming in right now. Junior running fourth for this stop. And I know some of the other cars are slowing down, too. So they go to work on the tires. Here is Darrell Derringer coming into the pits. He was in second place. And tires go in on him, too. Those are those uh, quick speed wrenches that Chris Economaki talked about earlier that work off nitrogen. That's right. Here's Fred Lorenz, and he's in the pits now. We'll see how quick uh, some of these pit stops are going to be. You know, they, I think they've got some trouble on uh, Junior Johnson's car just looking down there. Uh, Junior shaking his head. And uh, that's all, I think, for Junior Johnson today. There he goes into the garage area. So Junior Johnson is out of the race. He was running fourth at the time. Here's Curtis Turner's car. Curtis has been driving a real good race, and of course he's got a great crew. Here's A.J. Foyt, let's time him. Okay, A.J. coming into the pits here for his first pit stop of the day. Now they claim that if you can make a pit stop in 25 to 30 seconds, uh, you make four of those in a race, you can win. <laughs> That's right, and actually this is one of the best crews in racing, so uh, certainly they should make one of the faster stops. Crew Chief Glenn Wood is the man in charge down there. 23.4 seconds, that's remarkable. So now uh, let's uh, just get a word with the crew chief of uh, A.J. Floyd, Glenn Wood. What is the most important thing that you do in a pit stop? Well, the most important thing is to get everybody through at the same time so that uh, they're not waiting on any one particular one so that uh, it ends up that everybody's back over the wall at the same time. And car number three was the temporary leader here. That's Leroy Yarbrough. But now A.J. Foyt is in the lead. Here's what Banjo Matthews had to say about his crew. What about pit stop, Banjo? What's the key to getting out of the pits in a hurry? Just don't hurry. That's the quickest way to get out of the pits is not hurry. Well, that's a great answer. We'll be watching in the 400. A.J. Foyt has now moved back into the lead by virtue of that great pit stop of under 24 seconds. So A.J. is the leader at the moment. Freddy Lorenzen currently in second place, and Daryl Derringer is in third place. And as I mentioned earlier, Junior Johnson is out of the race. So we'll be back with more of the National 400 from the Charlotte Motor Speedway in Charlotte, North Carolina in just a moment. Well, as we approach the 100 lap mark in this 267 lap race, we've really got some blazing duels going on. You're looking at a good one right now between car number 16, Daryl Derringer, currently in third place, challenging Freddie Lorenzen in car number 28 for second. They are both about four seconds behind A.J. Foyt, who has the lead. Behind Derringer comes Curtis Turner, then Ned Jarrett, Dick Hutcherson, Earl Balmer, and Leroy Yarborough. Earlier, Cale Yarborough, no relation to Leroy, went out of the race. So we've really, hit, oh, here's a spin. Car number 34, 64, and 17. 17 is up on the guardrail. That's Junior Spencer's car. Elmo Langley driving 64, and Wendell Scott driving car number 34. The yellow caution flag is out. Spencer's car is hooked onto the guardrail up here between the numbers one and two turn. And let's see, 64 looks like he's moving. Wendell Scott's car has gone to the inside and I can't see him too well. So the yellow caution flag is out. There's Langley's car moving down the back stretch. He was involved in the accident, but apparently is going to continue. So two cars are out and now the ambulance has quickly moved over and they're taking Wendell Scott in the ambulance. He was in 34, and under the caution flag, here comes A.J. Foyt to the pits, Roger. Yes, this is a good time for him to make his uh, second pit stop. Right now, while they're running under the yellow caution flag, we're going to take a short break at the National 400. We'll be back very shortly with more of the race, but now let's check in with Jim McKay at Montauk, Long Island, New York. Thanks very much, Jim. We're racing under the green flag once again, and we have just a little over 100 laps to go in this race. A.J. Foyt 
in first place. Curtis Turner is now in second place in car number 47, and Daryl Derringer in car number 16 is third, and there you see the three cars. I might mention to you that when we left to go to Montauk Point, uh, they were taking Wendell Scott to the hospital. The report is he's okay. Uh, nothing seriously wrong with him. We're glad to have that report. A lot of strategy going on here, and uh, Roger, you might bring us up to date on uh, what the pit story has been. Well, the pit story has been very interesting. Actually, uh, Freddie Lorenzen has had to make an unscheduled pit stop, which could be very costly to him. But right now, there's more action on the track. Uh, right you are. Daryl Derringer just uh, passed by Curtis Turner and has now moved into second place. Uh, I'm glad you mentioned Lorenzen because many of his fans will be watching to see where he is. Uh, actually, he is running on the same lap as the leaders. He's in fourth place. Uh-oh. There's Neil Castle's car, number 88, and the yellow caution flag has gone out. But they're still battling up there for first place. Foyt and Derringer flash by us here, but the yellow caution flag is out now. It may be, Roger, that uh, car number 88 hit something on the track, or there is some metal on the track, uh, but they have signified now for the cars to slow down. Well, that's true. Uh, when things happen, or occasionally things happen to these automobiles, and a piece of metal will get on the track, and of course, if the car runs over that, it could very easily blow a tire. I just saw that young chap throw uh, something off the track on the inside. The pace car is out, and uh, this should aid. Here's Freddie Lorenzen. I was just about to say, this should help Lorenzen, because you mentioned that unscheduled stop that he made, I think, around the 120th lap after making one at 99. That's right. Actually, uh, this should put Freddie back on the same lap with the leaders and give him a chance to win the race. You talked a little bit about strategy. Actually, this has been a flat-out race, very little strategy. We'll be back with more of the National 400 at the Charlotte Motor Speedway in just a moment. Still under the yellow caution fly to get some of the debris off the track. An interesting thing happened here uh, just while we were away for a moment. Uh, Freddie Lorenzen made the pit stop, as you saw, when we went away, and then he came right back on the next lap, and they did something to the car. Roger? Well, actually, I think Freddie wasn't satisfied with the handling of his chassis, and they changed it a little bit. So that means that Freddie now has dropped back to seventh place, according to our calculations, and they're under the green once again. A.J. Foyt, Curtis Turner, Ned Jarrett has now moved to third. He's in car number 11. Then Daryl Derringer, Dick Hutcherson, and then Lorenzen. So they're back running under the green once again as we approach the closing stages of this race. The important thing about those last pit stops was that Freddie was able to get back on the same lap with the leaders. And even though he lost a little time adjusting his chassis, if he's able to run faster as a result of it, he should be able to pick up some time. You see Curtis Turner right on the heels of A.J. Foyt. Turner in car number 47, a local boy from Charlotte, North Carolina. Every time he comes around, the crowd gets up and cheers him on. So he is a, certainly a sentimental favorite to win this race today. I'm a little surprised at Turner's uh, performance on this racetrack. Uh-oh, we've got a little trouble here. Looks as though the boy lost uh, some suspension pieces. Now that's G.C. Spencer's car, number 49, coming into the pit area, and uh, he certainly will be through for the day. At least uh, if they get it back, it'll be not in contention. This is a lap timing now. We'll uh, try to run on A.J. Foyt. Earlier, we timed him in 37 seconds flat, which put him up around 145.9. We'll see what he is now as he comes down to the finish line. 37.9, a little slower than earlier, and that converts to 142.481 miles an hour. Still plenty fast. It certainly is. As I was saying about... Uh oh wait, wait, Excuse me, Raj. Here is Daryl Derringer's car. He went up and smacked the wall. And he is down on the inside. He actually came up and hit the wall, skidded through the uh, turn between one and two, and he's coming around and in. Looks as though he's broken a right front wheel there. And here's I can tell. Either the wheel broke or some suspension pieces. Looks as though he'll be out for the day. Kind of strange to have it happen to two cars, Castles and... And Derringer, uh, practically within a minute's time, Roger. Well, actually, this is towards the end of the season, and some of those uh, parts could be getting a little bit tired. And, of course, these racetracks are very abusive to these automobiles because of the tremendous speed and the great G-load going through the turns. Well, that puts him out. He was running in fourth place. So it's A.J. Foyt, Curtis Turner, and Ned Jarrett. That means that Hutcherson will move up one, and Lorenzen, number 28, will move up. 
Now let's see if we can get a word with Daryl Derringer down to Chris Economaki in the pit area. Chris? One of these days, Daryl, we'd like to talk to you in victory lane. But today, you're out of the race again, and why? Well, uh, Chris, the right front wheel broke, going in the number one car, and I crashed into the wall and put the car out of the race. We've had some other wheels break today. Why are we seeing that here today? I don't know. Our wheels, uh, as far as I know, was pretty new, and like I say, we get by best we can and run those used Mercury's, but I don't know what happened, Chris. It's just something. Have you ever broken a wheel before? Not in a long time. Not in a long time. Was it a solid hit you gave the wall? No, I glanced off of it. I, I run the corners real low, which you know, and as the car approached the rail, I kind of got it wooed. I still had brakes and everything, and I, I got it slowed down enough, and I just glanced off the wall about three times, but uh, it's real good shape. Tough break for Daryl Derringer. Uh, one of the favorites is out of the race. Earlier, Cale Yarborough went out. Uh, Junior Johnson is out with uh, motor trouble, so it's taking his toll. Bobby Johnson, uh, Bobby Johns is out of the race. A.J. Foyt. Curtis Turner, Ned Jarrett, Dick Hutcherson, and Freddie Lorenzen. And look at Lorenzen. Lorenzen is taking Hutcherson. 28 passing 29 here. And if Freddie gets him on this turn, he'll be in fourth place. So keep your eye on him, and he's got it. I think probably that adjustment that Freddie gave his automobile in the pits is better. We'll be back with more of the National 400 in just a moment. We've got a couple of hot battles going on right now. A.J. Foyt is in first place, but the battles seem to be for second and uh, third. Right here is Curtis Turner in car number 47. He's in second place. Ned Jarrett is right behind him in car number 11. And then uh, two more cars back after some slower cars go through there. We have Freddie Lorenzen, who is in fourth, leading Hutcherson, who is in fifth and giving him a real challenge. So here is Jarrett in 11, chasing Curtis Turner. And uh, I'll tell you, for the last couple of laps, uh, they've really been nipping at each other. They certainly have, and really the job that uh, Curtis Turner is doing is remarkable, considering the fact that he's been off these super speedways for quite a number of years. The fellow to come back and do the great job he is really has to be a great race driver. Well, you know, Jarrett's been around for a while, too. Uh, he Rod. certainly has. He's been racing many, many years, and it's wonderful to watch these two veterans run in there as close as they do. Yeah, and by contrast, we're looking at a couple of not uh, youths by any matter of means, but Freddie Lorenzen uh, is still on the uh, light side of 30, and he is being chased by Dick Hutcherson, also a youthful competitor in car number 29, and they are now battling for fourth place, which Freddie has. Well, actually, Freddie moved up and passed Hutcherson, and then Hutcherson began to pick up the pace a little bit, and he's giving uh, Freddie quite a go. So A.J. Foyt still in the lead, in second place, Curtis Turner, then Ned Jarrett, then Freddie Lorenzen, and then Dick Hutcherson. So it's been quite a race all day. Uh, the average speed is not quite as high as it was a year ago, simply because we've had four caution flags. Uh, the first one on the first lap of the race, the second one on the third lap of the race, which has slowed down the average speed. And there goes Jarrett on the inside, and we'll see if we can take Curtis Turner. This is the battle for second, remember. I don't think he's going to get him, uh, uh, Roger. Turner should have a little of the advantage because his line is a little bit better. Uh oh, uh, a car number 24 went by us. The windshield has flown right out of the car. It's on the track, and that's Sam McQuag trying to ride uh, this hurtling machine to a halt. It looks like he's going to be able to stop it. All right, the yellow caution flag goes out immediately. The windshield, uh, Roger, actually popped and flew through the air, and it's not on the inside of the. There it is. Yeah, actually what happened, he lost a tire and went right into the wall. Then he tried to hold the car up there so as not to get down in the traffic or into the way of some of the faster moving automobiles. Well, that was Sam McQuag who earlier uh, talked about the heavy going earlier in the race, you recall, and said he didn't want any part of that uh, heavy going early. But uh, I guess it doesn't uh, matter when it's going to happen. It's, it's all fate. Well, we'll be back uh, with more of the closing laps of this National 400 very shortly. Right now, let's check in once again with Jim McKay at Montauk Point out in Long Island in New York. Thanks very much, Jim, and what a race we have going here right now. Roger Ward and Chris Economaki and I have just been aghast at the kind of competition we've seen here during the last 10 or 15 laps. Three cars have been running so close, I actually think at times they touch. Lorenzen and Foyt, 28 and 41, and right behind them is car number 29, that's Dick Hutcherson. And this is the way they've been going, lap after lap after lap, at speeds close to 150 miles an hour. 
Actually, on a few occasions in the turns, they probably do touch a little bit. I don't know how they do it, Roger. Look at this. Look at Hutcherson. They're going to be three abreast down the back straightaway. And there they are, as if they're welded together in some sort of a precision movement. Well, I wouldn't want to be the guy on the outside coming off. I'll tell you this, Lorenzen is the middle man in that uh, three-car sandwich. Boy, what a scramble. And Lorenzen cuts off Hutcherson, and look at Foyt. Foyt cuts off Lorenzen. Over in the pit area, there, I think you can see a T-H-I-N-K, a think sign for Fred Lorenzen. Well, of course, his crew is a little bit upset. They don't want him running uh, that close to these other automobiles because if either driver slipped even just a little bit, all three cars could be out. So as they move into the last 40 laps of this race, it's Foyt, Lorenzen, and Hutcherson. And here we have a spin between the numbers one and two turn. And it is car number 38. That would be Wayne Smith of Advanced North Carolina. The yellow caution flag is out. And uh, Lorenzen went by A.J. Foyt when the uh, yellow was out. Now, that'll pose an interesting uh, problem. Earlier, Roger Ward, you mentioned about the difference between NASCAR and USAC rules. Well, actually, uh, in NASCAR rules, you race clear around to the starting line, and Foyt's natural instinct would be to back off immediately when the yellow flag comes out, because in uh, USAC, you have to do that. In other words, a yellow flag is all over the track. That's right. But in NASCAR, that you race around clear to the uh, starting line. And there is A.J. going ahead of Ferdy Lorenzen, as much as to say, now look, I had the lead, and you passed me on the yellow. But uh, according to the rules, Lorenzen really is in first place. So the yellow caution flag is out, and we'll be back with more of the National 400 from the Charlotte Motor Speedway in just a moment. Under the green flag now on the 241st lap of a 267-lap race, and these fans are really having fun. They're standing up close to the guardrail, cheering on their favorite driver. And right now, it's still that battle between Freddie Lorenzen, who is in the lead, and A.J. Foyt, who's right behind him. Then Hutcherson is still third, and Curtis Turner is fourth. And look at how close Foyt is running to Lorenzen, and Foyt's going to try to go on the inside. He got almost all the way by. Yes, as a matter of fact, he did. He's in the lead again. And look at Freddie. He's going to take the inside. As Foyt bows to the outside, Lorenzen's got the lead. Roger, I've never seen anything like it. I haven't either. I don't know how many times these fellows have changed the lead, but it's certainly more times than I can count. So Lorenzen on the inside, Foyt is on the outside. Hutcherson and Turner are just right behind them. If anything should happen to these uh, two cars, then of course uh, Hutcherson, who is there in 29, and that gold car would be there to take over. A.J. Foyt still only feet apart and here they come and look how close Hutcherson has moved up now that car right behind him is Leroy Yarbrough in a 65 Chevy in car number three but he is not in this first group as a matter of fact he's either a lap or two behind so the way they stand is Lorenzen and Foyt and take your pick on which is first Hutcherson is right behind them and then comes Curtis Turner so that's the way they move now as we come into the final 30 laps of this race. Truly uh, one of the classics of all automobile racing. Well, Freddie itches ahead again, but you never can tell how long he'll be there. And look how close Turner is behind Leroy Yarbrough in car three, who, as I mentioned, is out of contention there with this lead group. Look at that. There's Turner right there. And they've been turning laps, not at reduced speed in this echelon formation. They've been clipping off 147, 147.5, 148 miles an hour, Roger. That's right. Actually, these cars running this close together are getting a little boost from each other, and their speed could be a little bit higher, but they're running as fast as they can, believe me. You get as much help, uh, for instance, here in a shorter track than you do at Daytona? No, you wouldn't get near as much help here, because at Daytona, the straightaway speeds are considerably higher, but it is still a help. So Freddie Lorenzo now uh, lengthens a little bit of breathing room between him and A.J. Foyt. But Curtis Turner's moved right up there and will be challenging all of these boys. Earlier, Chris Economaki talked with Freddie Lorenzo. Let's listen. Why don't you want to run in the pack, Freddie? Well, the, it seems like the wind currents here, anywhere over 140 miles an hour, the wind currents move the cars around and 
just a little too dangerous. I guess I might be getting a little old. <laughs> getting a little old. Well, he's talking about running in the pack. He's not running in the pack right now, but I'll tell you, he's running with uh, some great competition. He doesn't look too old to me. He's only won more money than anybody else in history at this particular track, and I think that goes for all the stock car racing, too. Uh, Freddie won the race a year ago here, the National 400. He has won three races. Uh, see, two World Sixes, two World 600s, and then the last year, so he's shooting for number four here today. I guess he knows the track about as well as anybody. Well, Freddie's a really great stock car driver, and of course his car is well prepared, so when he comes, he's ready to race. And look at that. Four cars, any one of them could win this race right now. These and there drivers, goes Hoyt again. He's trying to get underneath Freddie. I think he's got him. Well, you never can tell. Freddie should have a little of the advantage here. And look at Hutcherson right behind him. Uh-oh, this is going to hurt Foyt maybe a little bit. There's a slower car ahead of him. Let's see if uh, Freddie will pinch him off. He didn't pinch him off. Uh, Freddie's a great competitor, there but he's he also did. a good sport. He's got him there on the turn. Lorenzen, Foyt, Hutcherson, and Turner. We'll be back with the exciting finish of the National 400 in just a moment. Seven laps to go. And it still is anybody's race with Lorenzen, Foyt, Hutcherson, and Turner riding right in there, yards apart. Actually, a little slip by any one of these drivers could uh, make the difference. Here goes Foyt. He tries to get him on the inside. Foyt's the kind of a driver that just doesn't give up, so you can expect to see him try almost anything. But Freddie staves him off. We're on the 261st lap, 267 lap race. There will be no more pit stops, you can be sure of that. Look at Hutcherson. He's had a very strong race all day today. He's from Charlotte, North Carolina, hometown boy. There goes uh, Boyd trying him on the outside. On the outside this time. Uh oh, he's in trouble. He hit the wall. Foyt spins. He just does miss the rear end of Hutcherson's car. Look at him side slide down the track and he's right to the entry to the pit area. So Foyt has spun out. Lorenzen keeps on going and I imagine Freddie wonders what happened. He certainly does, but of course Hutcherson is still right there and uh, certainly could be a factor in this race. Believe it or not, Foyt is going to uh, go into the pits and try to get back onto the track to finish up high, but he is out of contention, so Lorenzen now is in first place, and there is Foyt. Uh, he's still in the car, so he'll try to get back out there, but Hutcherson and Turner now are trailing Freddie Lorenzen. They're just changing the tires on the automobile. He'll be back on the track in just a moment. Roger, I don't know what you can say about a spin like that, uh, whether it's skill or whether it's luck to come out as unscathed as he did. Well, of course, uh, this was very unfortunate because we sure, certainly could have had a uh, photo finish here, but uh, one of those things that can happen when you try too hard, you make a little mistake. Let me and... tell you, we still could have a photo finish. <laughs> yes, we certainly could. And here is Earl Bomber's car. Bomber screeching down the back stretch. And the car is still on the inside over there. Looks like he lost the right front uh, wheel also. I don't know. We've had a lot of that kind of trouble today. This uh, racetrack is a little bit rough, and it does abuse these automobiles quite a bit. So the checkered flag will be coming up in just three more laps. We'll be back to see who takes it first in just a moment. We're on the 266th lap, and when Freddie Lorenzen in car number 28 comes around, this time in front of us, He'll get the white flag, which will signify one lap to go. Hutcherson is still right behind him, although Freddie has lengthened his lead a little bit, and Curtis Turner is behind Hutcherson. So here comes Lorenzen. The white flag will be out for him. You'll certainly be glad to see this flag after this race. There it is. One and a half miles to go. At 148 miles an hour in 37 seconds, he should be here for the checkered flag if he can hold that lead for that amount of time. He is the winner of the National 400 for the second year in a row. Hutchison will have to make his move now if he's going to do it. He 
recall a year ago, Lorenzen won it on the last lap here. Here he is going by one of the slower cars. So there doesn't seem to be any way for Hutcherson to catch him. Lorenzen is across the finish line. There he is. The checkered flag is out for him. Hutcherson flashes by just two seconds after uh, Lorenzen. And Curtis Turner takes third place. One of the most outstanding automobile races, Roger Ward, we've ever seen. Well, it certainly was one of the most exciting. There wasn't a fan that left. <laughs> so there it is, Lorenzen, Hutcherson, Turner, Jarrett, in that order. Now, while uh, Freddie Lorenzen's coming in to victory lane, let's say a word about next week's program. Freddie Lorenzen of Elmhurst, Illinois. Freddie, that was 50 fantastic laps of racing toward the end. Did you have any problems? Well, no, except uh, Foyt was my only problem. It just seemed that uh, I was as strong as him all the way around. He was as strong as me. I could ride in the corners a little bit lower, and he liked it higher, so that's how we rode, and uh, just a heck of a race. I never raced that hard for the last 50 laps. Had he stayed in it, who do you think would have won? Well, we'll never know that, just like the last 400 here last year with me and Richard, but uh, I think it would have been a little closer finish than me and Richard. What about uh, the closeness of the two cars? Did you come together at all during the going? Oh, a few times. We were running three abreast. Uh, I came together, and when also we came up in quite a few slow cars in the turn. Foyt would leave... Uh, just enough room between, for enough for me most of the time, and uh, maybe if there wasn't quite enough, I'd sort of get enough, so it was pretty sportsman all the way, I guess. You both look like gentlemen out there. Uh, feels good, and uh, he's fun to race with, very sportsman, and uh, it was tight a long time, and tight in a lot of spots, but it was fun. Are you tired, Freddie? I'm real tired, and I got a couple blisters on my hand. I got those the last 50 laps. Well, it was a great race. Winner, Freddie Lorenzen. And now, back to you, Bill Fleming. Well, there it is, one of the most exciting races we have ever seen on an automobile track, and Roger Ward, I'm certain you'd second that. Well, I certainly would. As a matter of fact, I never recall seeing a more exciting race than that. Who knows what might have happened <laughs> if A.J. hadn't spun. Well, it certainly was unfortunate because he's the kind of a man who never gives up, and he was trying everything he could to get by Freddie. Might have been a wire finish, you never can tell. We were very sorry to have had the report of the fatality to the veteran driver Harold Kite of Augusta, Georgia in an accident that happened on the very first lap of this 267 lap race. And we extend our deepest sympathies to the friends and family of Harold Kite. The official order of finish, once again, Fred Lorenzen, Dick Hutcherson, and Kurt Turner, one, two, and three, all in 65 Fords. Here to make a final comment, Rod? Well, I'm looking forward to many more races like that. Boy, I'll tell you, this is a great place to be in a race like that. Okay, well, that's just about the story of the National 400 here at the Charlotte Motor Speedway. The executive producer of ABC's Wide World of Sports is Rune Arling. Today's program was produced by Dick Kirchner. The National 400 was directed by Marvin Schlenker and Doug Wilson. Life-saving competition directed by Lou Vopicelli. Remember, next week on ABC's Wide World of Sports, we'll make our first visit to Spain for the World Roller Skating Championships and Albany, Oregon for the World Championship Timber Carnival. Engineering facilities today were provided by WSOC-TV Charlotte and ABC New York. Preceding was videotaped on Montauk, Long Island and in Charlotte, North Carolina. Nationwide and worldwide travel arrangements for Wide World of Sports made through and promotional consideration furnished by TWA, Trans World Airlines.